This is my Isabel. I met her when I was in Costa Rica volunteering at an animal shelter. Mm. She had been rescued from a situation of just terrible neglect. She was malnourished. She had a skin infection which left her without any fur. And she had just about every parasite that a dog in the tropics can have. But even as sick as she was when they rescued her, she carried herself with such pride and dignity that her rescuers said they reminded her of royalty. So they named her Isabel. And she was always like that, reserved, quiet, dignified. Even as she got better and grew out the most beautiful fur, she wasn't that interested in the other dogs, didn't really want to interact with the other people. One day, after the dogs had been fed and exercised and were all just sleeping, I was sitting having coffee with the other volunteers, and I felt this pressure against my leg, and I looked down, and it was Isabel. Looking up, with, looking up at me with those big brown eyes. So I picked her up, and I held her in my lap, and she just melted, put her head on my shoulder. Something told me that that's all she really wanted, was just to feel safe. She didn't need toys or games or treats, just a place, a person, where she could feel safe. And just like that, she stole my heart, and she was mine. Our first six months together, my life was really transient and we traveled a lot. We went from Costa Rica to Alaska to Ontario to North Carolina. And the whole time, Isabel just rolled with it. At a campsite, she'd find a spot in the sun, an Airbnb, some soft couch. A day in the car, she had her spot by my headrest. It didn't matter. She was always that dignified princess, curled up in her comfy spot, just watching the world go by. Isabel loved the beach. Whenever her toes touched the sand, her eyes lit up and she smiled and it was on. <laughs> She'd run up and down the beach as fast as she could. Uh, watching her play and seeing her like that, it just always made me laugh. God, it was fun. When we settled in New York, that was when Isabel really hit her stride. She played more. She had a stuffed duck that was her favorite toy. And God help the other dog that got between her and that duck. We'd walk out in the open fields, and she'd get so focused on the scents and the smells, eyes shining, tail wagging. She was Queen Isabel, hunter of all things furry and small. Around that time, there was a song with the line I stole. Whenever I came home, I'd open the door and shout, Isabella, your boyfriend's here. And she would come prancing down the hall, doing her little happy dance, tail wagging, my little blonde girlfriend. She was always aloof with other people, but with me, she was always that dog at the shelter, melted in my arms and head on my shoulder. We were bonded so tightly by now that that love, that comfort, that safety, it flowed both ways. Nothing filled my heart like she did. The feel of her little chest rising and falling, the sound of her soft snores. I might have been her home, but, but she was mine too. Through all of this, though, she was sick. She, she never really recovered or overcame the health issues that she started out her life with. Some old disease would flare up or some new disease would be discovered. We'd have a few good months and then back to the vet we'd go. She fought so many battles. She overcame Ehrlichia, heartworm, Spirocerza lupi, osteoarthritis. Oh, my poor little one. The last one came in May of 2023. We tried everything, but nothing worked. By July, she could barely walk. She wasn't herself. I asked her to tell me what to do, and she did. Our last day together was a beautiful summer's day. We just sat on the porch, looking at the sky and the clouds. Everything was so still, and it was peaceful. I gave her ice cream. Our time together ended much the same way it began, actually, with her in my arms, head on my shoulder. My Isabel. She was very loved, and she's very missed. I'm Jeff, and this is Ben's Place.